And we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fifth segment, we are going to be talking about the finals, specifically what we should expect from Game 2 coming in from both of these teams based off of the performance that we saw from yesterday's game. So the next game isn't until this Sunday on June 9th, so it does give us a little bit of time to talk about this sort of thing and to make these sort of um, decisions, you know, where should we place our bets, who to place our bets on, this, that, and the other. And judging by their sort of pattern in this postseason, I feel like we should expect the Celtics to lose this second game against the Dallas Mavericks. Now, this is just because of the trend that's been going on with a lot of these, in a lot of these games. I mean, the Celtics, they've lost in Game 2 in all of the series, except for the most recent one, where they played arguably one of the more weaker teams in the Eastern Conference. I'm sorry that I called like you know the Indiana a weak team, despite the fact that they ended up making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but it's just the way that they made it there, it's, I'm sorry, beating, the, beating an injured Knicks team, I cannot... I cannot let that slide whatsoever. It's they should not have made it there. I'm sorry, but like no, no. That loss it still hurts. It hurts my soul, and it hurts to see the fact that that team is in was in the Eastern Conference Finals, and like they quickly got out of the Eastern Conference Finals, and especially when they had so many other opportunities to win it. But that's a completely different talk. So I have a little bit more faith in the Mavericks than I do in the pay than I did in the Pacers to win the second game in the series because this this Mavericks team it's been I mean they've shown us all postseason that they're a much that they're a very dangerous team both on the offense and in the defense they were ranked pretty high defensively in the ratings when you looked at the postseason and again it's like this Celtics team, they've been struggling in game twos in all of the series, whether it be against, you know, a team that doesn't have Jarrett Allen, whether it be get against a team that doesn't have Jimmy Butler, they always seem to struggle. And they didn't do that against the Pacers, but at the same time, I mean, they're they're just, they're the Pacers. I'm sorry to say this, but the Pacers defense is not something to be afraid of. And when you're playing at home, that the defense, if you're not afraid of the defense, you know, it just ultimately boosts your offense like that. And I do not feel like um, this Mavericks team is going to lose in game two. They they definitely cannot lose in game two, like without a doubt. If they lose in game two, then I feel like the series is going to be is going to be over. The Celtics, they have yet to lose a single away game in this entire postseason, which is why if the Mavericks end up going down 2 nothing in the series, it could be very, very dangerous for them. And <clears throat> with that in mind, the Celtics, they all, they've, the only losses that have happened have been from home games. So that's usually, at least according to that trend, it seems like that's really the best time that you can beat them when they're at home and they have, and they have that kind of pressure. Now, it's usually teams that um usually teams that play out at home they don't really have that much pressure on them because you know they're playing in front of a home crowd but teams like New York and Boston and LA with like really high markets and with a lot of people in attendance it's not really the same thing like i mentioned how with New York having home court advantage might actually be a disadvantage because the New York media is relentless on top of the fact that like if you there's a pressure on if you don't do well your own fans are going to start booing you that's sort of a similar thing that the Boston Celtics have where it's like you have all these expectations at home everything is in your favor and like you just absolutely cannot lose like there's everything in your favor being the favorite to go to win the game they're the first eastern conference team since the miami heat to be favorited in a finals game and it's like um, the first eastern conference team to be favorited by the way since the miami heat and it's like you you have all of these things pointed in your favor you have the home court and it's like it you have home court you have the 
the odds in your favor, you have the better team on paper, everything's in your favor, meaning there is just more pressure on you and less pressure on your opponent. And that might create a huge disadvantage for um, for a team more than it creates an advantage for the team. Because you go in there thinking, oh, it's going to be really simple, and it's not really simple. That's been the story in every single game, too, that they've lost. And who knows? Maybe they learned from it. Again, they haven't lost a game since May. So it's like they're on a really good, they're on a huge winning streak in this postseason. And it's like it's going to be really difficult to blow them off of that winning streak. So... It's going to be, I think, I still think that the Mavericks, they have the best chance of winning in game two, especially after the performance that they had in the last game. I have a feeling that they're going to step it up. They're going to come up with either a different game plan or Kyrie is going to get a little bit more involved in this system, more so than he was in the previous game. He didn't really do much offensively, which was honestly, in my opinion, the biggest reason why they didn't win that game. So if you just have him performing I'm just grabbing my charger. If you just have him performing well on the offensive side of the ball, I think you'll be good. I think the Mavericks would be all right because, again, it was really just Kyrie shooting that caused them to lose this game and to make the game sort of not close, which is which is honestly like the biggest reason why this kind of, you know, offense isn't really the best offense suited to win a championship because there's so much pressure on your two stars and it's so much pressure on the two of them to perform it's not easy to maintain that level of consistency in such an important game of your series and important game of your season as well it's like just so much pressure on those two specific players alone not to mention the pressure being put on your teammates that need to hit timely shots in a timely matter so not to mention the offense also makes putting people into a rhythm a little bit difficult even if they are a phenomenal three-point shooter so like again like this offense it won in 2016 so you know there's argument that can be said oh well this offense worked at one time so maybe it'll it could work again but it, it's also it's not as often that you see a team composed of just two players winning the championship right and you're going to need a lot more than just two players to perform consistently every single time, which is why I wasn't a big fan of this. This this was the biggest reason as to why I didn't think this offense was going to make it far in the postseason, because just relying on those two players, while they're phenomenal players, you can't just rely on the two of them. And that's basically all I have for this fifth segment. I expect the Dallas Mavericks to win in game two and make it a little bit more competitive of a series just so they don't get swept. But aside from that, not really much that needs to be talked about. Just get ready for the game that's going to happen on Sunday and be sure to tune in to uh, my podcast on Monday, which I will definitely be talking about the uh, Maverick. I'll definitely be talking about that game in the first segment uh once i go over it oh wait i have some i have something else in the chat that i have to go over dragos has another comment it's a high pressure on irving because he is the only form of hold on i can't read that whole thing he's the only f he's the only from the off from the mavs team that has experience in the finals oh okay Luca, because of the media, has very high pressure, and that does make sense, and I do understand that, you know, Kyrie, he's been, of all the players that was in, that's on the Dallas Mavericks, he obviously has the most experience being in the finals, he's been to three in a row, and obviously, you know, he knows that pressure, but it's been a while since he's been to the finals, like, if we're being, if we're being blunt, it's been since 2017 since he's been to the finals, that's a seven-year gap, so, that that might be that might he might be full of like you know a lot of pressure. I also think it's the pressure of playing in Boston for him. I don't know what it is. He's just been really he's just been really unlucky playing in Boston since that game one again like against the Celtics when he was on Brooklyn. He dropped thirty nine points in that game one. I believe he was absolutely ridiculous. And ever since then, he's just been really lax against Boston. So. You know, but again, it's definitely something that he needs to improve and something that he needs to work on. So that's going to be the end of the podcast for this. Um, that's And that's going to be the end of this segment. So thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. 
We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And as usual, please remember to use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every show segment. That is gsmcpodcast.net. It really helps the show, makes the show much more interactive between myself and you guys. Once again, the link is gsmcpodcast.net. That is all I have for you today on this show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to tune in on Monday where I will give a little, you know, a, I guess, you know, a synopsis of the game, game two that's going to happen on Sunday. Be sure to tune in at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.